Hey guys, it's Amy, Feel Better With Yoga. We are almost two months deep now in the COVID quarantine and social distancing measures and all those things that seem to now have become our routine way of life. And I hope that today's practice finds you healthy and well. And boy, I hope with just a shred of your sanity left, even if it's fleeting, and if it doesn't, then I'm especially glad that you chose to take time for yourself today. Took a little pause out of this new weird life to take care of you. And I hope that by the end of the practice you feel a little bit better and maybe a little bit saner than before you started. So today's practice is a focus on lower back pain. And I know we've all, most of us have dealt with back pain at some point in our lives, chronically, or even just the acute flare-up and tweaking. So today's practice is good for anybody, but especially for those of us who have touchy-tweaky backs. So my yoga teacher who trained me in restorative yoga, Jillian Pransky, and hi Jillian, I hope you're watching, uh, check her out, JillianPransky.com. She is a gift. Um, Jillian always reminded us in every practice that muscular tightness can be stretched. Muscular tension cannot be stretched. It can only be relieved when we feel safe. So we can stretch tight muscles. We can only relax to get rid of tension. And tense muscles are partly, at least 50% of what gives us the back pain that we have. So the practice today in looking out for our, in helping our lower back pain, is twofold. We are going to stretch. We're going to stretch tight hamstrings, tight hips, piriformis, hip flexors, all that stuff that, that is tight on us. But we're also going to, and we're also going to strengthen back muscles, belly. But the second component of working on our lower back pain is the relaxation response. We got to release that tension by bringing ourselves to a safe feeling place. Three things we do to reach a state of the relaxation response. We deepen and slow the breath. We quiet the mind. And we relax the muscles. Easy. Deepen and slow the breath. Quiet the mind by being present, focusing on what we can notice right now, and then allowing our muscles to relax. Then we can work on the tightness. So you're going to need three props today, nothing that had to be bought from a store. Uh, if you have blocks at home, fantastic, get them out and we'll use them. If you don't, then it doesn't matter, we don't need them. So something to prop yourself up on, whether it's blocks, I've got this little tabley thing, uh, maybe a step stool, um, anything. Maybe if you're inside, just the edge of a coffee table or couch. So something to prop yourself up on. A cushion, bed pillow, couch pillow, something like that. And the third thing, something to cover your eyes with at the end in our restorative pose that we end with. It could be, this is a kitchen towel, it could be a shirt laying nearby in the pile of laundry that you do not need to fold right now. Uh, anything, doesn't matter, something that you can cover your eyes with. Okay, so gather those things and I'll meet you back here on the mat. When you're ready, we're going to lie down because lower backs like it a little bit better than all this sitting you've probably been doing while you're listening to me yammer on. So lie down on your back, knees bent, feet flat on the floor, arms wherever you want them. If it feels good to have them out to the side, do that, maybe up on your tummy. And as we talked about, the first thing we're going to do is start to bring about the relaxation response, deepening the breath. First thing we can do, slow and deepen the breath. If it helps you to feel your breath, bring your hands up just at the base of your rib cage, maybe even on the outside edges of your ribs. Maybe you even cross your arms and feel your ribs this way. Whatever would help you feel the breath moving in and out of you the most. Look at your ceiling or close your eyes. 
and find your breath. That breath that's always with you, just start to notice it. And as you notice it, see if you can just start slightly to deepen and slow it. Maybe creating that ocean sounding breath that we often do in yoga. Slightly closing, constricting the backs of our throats just a little bit. Narrows the passage so the same amount of air takes longer to get in, longer to get out. That Darth Vader voice. If it helps, open your mouth. You can really almost make that exaggerated. And if you're able and if it feels okay, close your mouth. Hands on your rib cage or wherever you've got them. And see if you can move your hands with your breath. Every breath filling up your lungs, huge causing your rib cage to expand and grow bigger. Rib cage moving the hands back and forth. Now that we have deepened and slowed the breath and really brought our attention there, let's quiet the mind. We're already doing that by noticing the breath. So what else can we notice? Most importantly, feel where you have landed on the ground, whatever you landed, whatever you're lying on. I've got rocks beneath me, dusty but still kind of sticky mat. Maybe you're on carpet and it's soft and squishy. Maybe the floor is hard. Allow your body to be one of, when you think of a sleeping baby or your pet that you're holding, how they're able to just release and melt into your hands. Allow your body to do that and then feel the figurative hands of the earth holding you gently and lovingly. Notice everything you can feel, this that part of the back of your head pressing into the ground, shoulder blades held in place by the earth, hips pressing into the ground, feel the soles of your feet pressing deeply into the mat or your carpet. Imagine yourself leaving an imprint behind as though you had wet feet. Wiggle your toes, feel your toes grip what's beneath them. So we're noticing that beautiful slow deep breath we're taking in and out. If you're still holding your ribs, feeling your hands be moved by your breath. feeling where you have landed on the ground. And now that we've quieted the mind and deepened the breath and we have all this to notice in this present moment, feel your body relax and release. Imagine yourself melting draining down into the ground. Sometimes it's easier to get to this place of relaxation. Sometimes it's rough, especially now we have so much going on. But give yourself permission to put all that aside, set it aside, know it'll be there when you get back, and just be here with what you're feeling. Maybe you feel tension. 
Maybe you feel butterflies in your belly or tightness in your chest or a lump in your throat. That's okay. Notice that too. Take two more deep, slow rounds of breath here before we start to move. One of the things you may be noticing through the video is all the noise around me. I've got a very windy day today. Don't know why. And you probably thought, why is she out there in the wind? It's so noisy. But I can guarantee you my house inside is much noisier. I've got so many people in there. So trust me, this is quieter. Okay. By the way, I didn't mention, if you want to keep a pillow or a cushion under your head while we're lying here, please do that. Don't wait for me to tell you. Okay, let's pick up one knee. Doesn't matter which one. Hug it very gently. I'm not even going to say towards your chest because that I don't want you to think I want you to pull it in. Just lift it, hug it a little, hold on to it. Maybe hold it steady or just bounce it a little bit. One more breath. Okay, hold on to that knee with one hand. Let the other hand relax. Doesn't matter what it does. Let's circle that thigh and knee around in circles. Always going to where it feels a little looser, where it feels good to you. I try to use rocking or very gentle bouncing in most of the stuff I do. I don't like the word bouncing because it sounds like it sounds aggressive but just a rocking motion because rocking in any form is soothing to us. That's why we rock babies. That's why we rock in rocking chairs. It does soothe us. We have that gift. We have the ability to soothe ourselves by rocking us ourselves the way we would a baby. One more breath. Put that foot down into the ground. Other knee. Hug it gently. If you feel resistance of any kind or pain deep in your hip when you do that, allow for that. Sometimes my hips are really tweaky and weird, so I tend to go out a little bit and that makes it feel nice instead of icky. So those are our two places, nice and icky. Go towards feels nice. Stay away from feels icky. Take some circles just like you did before. Maybe they're not smooth circles. Maybe it's just sort of an in and out. Doesn't matter. One more. Okay, gently set that foot down. Feet are about, as, about hip distance apart or shoulder distance, maybe wider. I don't know. Put both hands on both thighs. Gently press into your thighs. Nice and relaxed space in, in between the sacrum and the lumbar vertebrae above it. Nice and gentle. One more breath. Okay, relax all of that. We're going to take one leg, bend it just like you were going to hug it, but now we're going to bring it straight up towards the ceiling. No, I did not say straight leg, but straight up towards the ceiling. So you might be bent a whole lot, but we want the foot to kind of come near the ceiling. So if your leg is way out here because it's too hard to get it up, bend it a whole lot and then straighten it to wherever you can. Remember, nice, not icky. Flex your foot, circle it around. Find that slow, deep breath we were doing before. You can even play with going straighter, not straight, straighter. Feeling that stretch in the hamstring. Okay, set that foot down. Other leg. Bend it and then straighten it up. Ooh, my knee was creaking. <laughs> okay, straight-ish. Or maybe not even straight-ish, maybe a whole lot of bend. 
and we want nice, very soft knee so that your lower back can relax. This, I do this every morning in my bed before I even get out of bed. I do a few, I swim in the bed in the sheets a little bit and then I do some uh, like snow angels, but I'm not in snow. And then I do one leg up at a time for my back. That's my whole purpose. Take your foot in circles, flex, and point, whatever feels good. Oh, I just switched directions weirdly. Okay, set all that down. Now let's cross one ankle over the other thigh. If this feels great and you don't want to go any farther, stay there. Don't do anything different than this. Sometimes our backs are tight enough or our hips. This is plenty. If this doesn't feel like anything, then let's reach through, grab the back of this thigh, one hand in between the legs, one hand around, lay your head down, relax everything, let this foot dangle, and gently hug this leg towards you. What's the goal? The goal is not what this looks like. The goal is feeling stretch in the hip of this cross leg. Very passive stretch. Everything is relaxing. Find your breath again. Deep and slow breath. Quieting the mind by filling the mind with sensations. All the sensations around that, we're, that are happening around us that we're sensing. The sounds around us, what you can see feeling where you landed on the ground, and then especially feeling the sensations of this stretch. Relaxing all the parts of the body, except the arms. Arms holding onto the leg are all that are, all that are working right now. Okay, let all that come down. Uncross the leg, other side, maybe even Press that down, press that thigh away just a little bit. Switch, cross over the other ankle. And you want the ankle bone to be on top of the thigh. If you've got your foot, you're, gonna, you're, you're risking hurting this ankle. So make sure the ankle is steady. Reach through and around, grab the other, that, this lower leg, thigh. Everything relaxes into the floor. Only the arms are working. Breathe and notice tight, tight hip, tight and tense. Breathe into it. Imagine you could send all your breath, all that loving, nurturing breath right into the tight and tense muscles in your hip. One more breath. Now gently let all of that down. Rock your knees side to side a little bit. Again, we want our feet at least as wide as your sh hips or shoulders. And rock your knees a little bit side to side. Knees back to center, pointing up towards the ceiling or the sky. Pull your knees in again, and this time we're going to take both knees equally wide. Just let them flop. We're not pulling them, just letting them flop open. If this feels amazing, don't go anywhere else. Stay like this. You can rock. If you want to feel something more, if this isn't enough, you can reach through. Grab your ankles or the sides of your feet or your big toes, and gently, with the knees staying nice and bent, bring your feet a little apart or a lot apart to wherever, remember, nice versus icky. Some people struggle with this because of tightness, and their legs are almost straight because they're tr struggling to reach their toes. Let that relax, and your feet might come closer together. It doesn't matter, it's okay. And here you get a nice, Poor man's massage, what a friend of mine long ago called this. 
You can massage out your own lower back. Okay, feet back together. Take all that back down to the floor, and we're going to come up onto hands and knees. One of my favorite things to do, especially when my back is tweaky, I put my hands under my hips and use them like <laughs> my older son when he was little used to call that. It, it was like spatula. He wanted to spatula you up off the couch. So spatula your hips off the ground. Roll over a little. Ugh, if you're wearing a microphone thing, watch out for it. Push yourself up gently using your arm strength and then come over onto hands and knees. Oops. And I'm going to turn the other way to where my stuff is. On hands and knees. Knees about as wide as your shoulders. Hands right under the shoulders. Breathe and rock yourself here. Nice and loose. Breath moving you. Same way the wind is blowing all the trees in my backyard right now. Head and neck are soft and loose. Feel where you've landed here. We've changed positions. So I feel my fingertips and the edges of my palm digging into the ground as though I were going to knead bread dough and I was going to squish it. Feel now you have your knees pressing into the floor and the tops of your feet. If that doesn't feel good, feel your toes. Curl your toes under. We'll come into some rounding and arching, or cat-cow. We'll start by taking a deep breath in, staying neutral. And as you exhale, curl up in a ball, round. Feel that dome shape in your upper back, pushing the shoulder blades to the ceiling. And now, inhale. Face lifts up a little bit. Heart pulling up towards the mat in front of you. Maybe the lower back deepens the arch if that feels nice, not icky. Exhale, round. If arch in your back doesn't feel good, watch this next one. Inhale, come to neutral. Heart and face up a little bit. Exhale, round. Three more rounds of deep, slow breaths like that. Feel your breath. Feel your body. Feel the ground holding you in place. Last exhale and round. Come back into neutral spine. Let's sit back into child's pose or puppy pose. Knees as wide as you want them to be. We're going to push back hips pushing back towards our heels. If it's in your practice and this feels nice, you can put your bottom to rest right on your heels and stretch out your arms. If that feels icky, not nice, leave your bottom up in the air. Walk your arms forward. Your forehead can rest on the ground or you can rest it on a cushion, anything you've got. Breathe here. I know you're already breathing. Notice that breath. One more breath. Okay, rise back up to hands and knees with your arms a little farther out in front of you. And we're going to let our breath rock us forward and back again, like the treetops being blown by the wind. Inhale, forward shoulders up above your hands and let the, up, the lower body just be loose. Exhale, grip the floor, push back. Breathe yourself forward and back. One more forward and back breath. Okay, 
they come back up to hands and knees. We're going to come into your version of downward facing dog, whatever that usually is for you. So if you practice with me, you know that that could be hands on the floor, toes curled under, and you lift your bottom up, to, up in the air. That might be hands on blocks, if you have blocks at home, or the step stool. It might even be coffee table, couch. We're going to come up, and it's all the same. It's different means to the same end. We're lengthening our back. We've got something supporting us under our hands strong long back we're stretching out these tight hamstrings march your knees in place one of the most important things we can do for ourselves the greatest gift is to listen to ourselves listen to your body what feels nice what feels icky so if hands up this high isn't enough and I'll tell you no matter what day I'm having that always is enough for me hands a little bit lower on blocks or again if your practice is hands on the floor do that take your head rock it side to side look under one arm and with your exhale look under the other arm One more breath. Okay, bring your knees gently back down to the ground. Now we'll use whatever thing you got to support yourself, whether it's blocks, a step stool, table, and we're going to step one foot in front of us. To start, we're not lunging, foot's not way out, it's in, sort of at a um, 90 degree angle. So bring one hand onto coffee table, couch, block. And the, arm, the knee that's down, that arm right beside you. Inhale, lift that arm up. And create that little rainbow shape with your torso to the side. Great side body stretch. But the most important thing we're doing here, we're stretching out and relaxing the hip flexor deep inside the pelvis. So if you're not feeling it, push the hips forward just enough so that you feel this spot. Hip flexors get so chronically tight, partially from life, from running, from sitting at a desk all day, from pretty much everything like that, but it also becomes really tight due to tension. It's not actually tight, they are tense because our psoas and iliacus are tightly connected to our nervous system. And when we go through fight or flight, or stress like this that we're living, those tense up. So here we're just allowing them to passively relax. One more breath, come back to straight and tall, take that arm down. We'll move the front foot a little farther out and sink down into a lunge. So adjust whatever you got, blocks or your step stool or your handy dandy little table here not pushing sink down we hold so much tension in our hips so we get rid of that not by pushing down but by breathing and relaxing and one of my favorite places to rock just rocking a little bit and the longer we stay here Little by little, we can start to feel little tiny tendons, little things, little fibers deep in our hip and the hamstring and in the hip flexor start to let go as we're unconsciously holding on. Why do we do that? To protect ourselves. But when we can feel safe, those things let go a little bit. One more breath. Okay. Exhale, we're going to stretch out this front leg, not straight, straight-ish with this nice soft bend in it. Keep holding on to whatever you've got. Flex that foot back to whatever degree it feels okay. You're going to feel this really lighting up. Calf all the way down to the top of the heel, hamstring, and with your knee bent enough, you might even feel it back in this hip. 
breathe into that, all this tightness. Imagine your nose were right here and every breath in you took just went straight into this tight muscle, into all the tension we hold there. One more breath. Okay, find whatever you need to help yourself get back up and pull this leg back, knee back to the ground. And before the knee goes to the ground, maybe kick it out a little bit. And then other side. I should have gotten a step stool because this is not as mobile. Okay, other foot comes in front, right angle of the knee and whichever leg is down, that arm stays down by our side. Lift it up, breathe in. And exhale, little arch, sideways curve through the spine. Keeping the hips in, the pelvis in line with the shoulders. Not for pretty, but just so that you can feel it here in the hip flexor. One more breath here. Okay, straighten out, take that arm down, and then again, come into that lunge, move the foot forward, I'll scoot back a little bit, and sink down right there. This does create a little bit of arch in the lower back, and if you're feeling that and that feels bad, lean forward some. Rest your arms on your thigh, hands on the floor, hands wherever, just to get rid of that. We've all got different bodies in different situations, so adjust. Nice, not icky. <laughs> if that's annoying, I'm really sorry. It just it tickles me today. I don't know. One more breath. All right, shift back. Stretch out this tight leg. Flex the foot back. Breathe in. Nice and deep and slow. Exhale, full, complete, ocean-sounding breath out. One more breath. Bend that knee, come back. Bring that leg all the way back. Kick it around some, stretch it out. Knee back on the ground. Let's come back into downward facing dog again. Hands on the ground, the blocks, your other support. Lift your bottom up towards the ceiling, walk the feet back. Another thing to notice, am I feeling things loosen up here? My first downward dog of any day is always pretty rotten feeling, it is icky. And after I move around a lot, the next one actually feels nice. Okay, with a few breaths we're gonna move shift into plank and then back into downward dog. So even if you've got your hands up high on coffee table, couch, or step stool, you can still do this. We'll inhale so that we're not bent at the hips. Exhale, push back. Inhale. Exhale back. At your own pace, three more rounds of breath. Okay, bend your knees some and safely come up to standing. And if your back is really tweaky, very deeply bent knees, use your hands on your thighs to press up to standing. 
We've changed position again. Feel where you have landed on the ground. Feet wide. Picture them much wider than they are. Toes gripping the ground. And feel this whole of you held in place by the earth underneath you. Feel your breath moving your body as it moves through you. As we stand, bring some awareness into your tummy muscles. And that isn't a sucking in of your tummy. A lot of people ask me, do you mean suck it in? The best way I can, I always think to describe it is imagine you're a little kid and you're fighting with your brother, whatever, and he punches you in the stomach. I had a good childhood. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what I mean by that, but brace. So if some, something was coming at you right here, you would naturally brace those muscles. Imagine you can see the side muscles of your belly gathering together like a bag with a drawstring and you cinch it up. So feel that coming together. One more breath. Okay. Inhale, bring both arms out and all the way up straight, or if it feels good, a little bit of an arch right here. Exhale, hands to heart. Fold forward, tiniest bit with the hands on thighs. Now, if your usual is to go to the floor, great. If it's not, come to right here. You've got all this support in your arms and hands, but we're still strengthening all these supportive lower back muscles. Inhale, rise back up. Same thing, next one but be aware of your belly and imagine that gathering of your belly muscles, that cinching, bracing. Move with your breath. Breathe in, stretching that long belly. Exhale, gather your tummy. It's the exact same action you think of when you would do sit-ups back in the day, but much gentler and just as effective. One more. Forward, fold a little bit. Good. Deepening that just a little bit. Breathe in, arms come up. This time, exhale, arms down by your sides, coming into a little chair pose. If you feel fantastic, you can go as deep as you want, but if you're watching your back, chair pose, maybe even hands on thighs. Inhale, arms back up. Exhale, gather your belly muscles, cinch them in. One more breath. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, let your arms come down. We're gonna come into warrior one. One foot, or you can start at the top of the mat. One foot's gonna stay forward. I'm gonna do my right leg in front first. So that means I'm gonna step the left foot back onto the toes and the ball of the foot and then press that heel down. So this one, if you're pushing yourself farther than you can go into that icky zone, not good for your back. So if we're taking the feet super wide apart and trying to go super deep, I'm hurting my ankle. My hips are starting to open this way. My spine is being twisted in the wrong way, not in a good twist. So I need to bring my back foot in a little bit. Feet at least hip distance apart. And then inhale up into warrior one. And again, just like when we were kneeling, if this feels icky in the lower back because it's a little too much arch, lean forward a little bit, maybe even take the arms down, hold onto your thigh. And you feel that huge stretch from the heel, up the ankle, into the calf, all the way up the hamstring maybe. 
and you feel this front leg working so hard. If you look down at your foot, you see the tendons in your foot and the front of your shin adjusting, trying to help balance you. We take all that for granted. Notice it right now. What a cool thing our bodies are doing. One more breath. Exhale. Let's open into warrior two. And all we do is turn this back foot forward a little bit, toes pointing to the long edge of the mat, and the front foot stays the same. Make sure that the right foot, well, if you did the right leg, lines up to the arch of the back foot. Then we'll bring both arms out, flip the palms up, exhale, bend into the right knee. And as you hold here, have awareness of the whole abdominal section. Tightening, bracing, not sucking in, but bracing. Again, imagine like a hefty bag that you pull the drawstring and it all comes together. One more breath. Straighten out that leg. Tip back a little bit. If your back is touchy, you don't want to go far back. But we're cinching up this side of the waist, using those side abdominal muscles and the obliques, stretching open this side. Exhale. Back into warrior two. Bring this hand or elbow to the thigh. Other arm reaches up. One more breath. Okay, rise back up, straighten out the leg, tip over just a bit. Back into warrior two and extended side angle. One more like that. Inhale, straighten the leg, just tip over the tiniest bit. Really feel the side of your waist cinching the pelvis and the lowest rib coming closer together, letting all this stretch open. Back into warrior two. Last time, extended side angle. One more breath. Okay. Rise back up to warrior two. Straighten out that leg. Turn the right foot in and spin everything around. Pivot. So now you're facing the other end of your mat. When you do that, look back. This foot may still be way out to the side or too far back. So adjust it. Spin that foot on the heel around. So the toes are facing more towards at an angle. Hips squared, feet hip distance apart, come into that side, warrior one. If the back is tweaky, hands on your thighs, lean forward a little bit to get rid of the arch if that feels better. Gathering the tummy. Strong lower back, strong belly holding you here. One more breath. Okay, rise back up, open again, facing me again. Into warrior two, other foot. This foot needs to scoot forward just a little bit, or if it does, scoot it forward. Heel lines up to that arch. Inhale, arms open. Straighten out the bent leg, tip over a little bit. Okay. 
exhale, warrior two, extended side angle. Remember your breath, deep and slow, but also noticing it, feeling it. Our breath is kind of like when you put something in the oven for a long time and then forget it, you forget to check on it. It's still cooking. Whatever you put in there is still cooking. So just like that, our breath is still there. We just forget to notice it. Go back. Straight leg, straightish leg, tip over. And back, extended side angle. One more round. Inhale, straighten out the leg, tip over, gather your tummy. Now, arms come down. Turn that front, both feet to face straight ahead. We're gonna come into wide-legged forward fold. If it's comfortable for you, we bend at the hip crease right here and bring the hands to the floor. If that is just too much of a free fall, blocks or the coffee table or something to support you. I'm gonna turn this sideways. So start maybe with bent knees. Come down here with hands on thighs and then hands on whatever your support is. And once you're okay getting where you want to be, then you can take your legs straighter if you want. Let your head hang. Your option, it's always up to you. You can, oops, you can keep your hands right underneath you or walk them farther forward if that feels better on your back like a wide-legged downward dog. Okay, walk your hands back underneath you. Lift your chest up away from the floor a little bit. Hands on the support or hands on thighs. Bend your knees a lot. Use your upper body strength to press you back up. Walk your feet a little bit closer together, and let's come down onto the floor. And again, I forgot to do it before, but if you want a pillow or a cushion under your head, do that. Take yourself flying back. And let's come into a little bit of core work. And I kind of hate the way that sounds, core work, like it's big. It can be very gentle, and that's what we're going to do. So knees, hip distance, uh, feet hip distance apart. Knees can flop in. And we're just going, going to isolate the belly muscles, tightening them and then releasing them. So on an inhale, we're going to tilt the pelvis just a little bit, as though we were going to do crunches, and we're not. Just feeling the belly tighten. Imagine both sides of the abdominal walls coming together. Exhale, relax, all of that. Inhale. This causes a little rounding in the lower back, so you're pressing your lower back into the ground. Exhale, back to neutral, which may lift your lower back off the floor just a little bit. Keep that moving as you breathe. Inhale, tighten, shorten these belly muscles. Exhale, release. Hands can go anywhere. Sometimes it's helpful to bring your hands to your tummy and dig in and feel that, feel the muscle tightening. Four more rounds of breath at your pace. Slow, deep breaths. 
noticing everything that you're sensing allows our minds to quiet. Relaxing everything in your body except this one motion and then releasing it afterwards. If you've already done four, stop. If you haven't, finish. Good, relax everything. Hug one knee in all by itself. This time, take the other leg out straight-ish, kind of straight. We're not forcing, we're hugging this leg, but we're letting this leg just relax again, allowing the hip flexor and the tops of the quadriceps to relax. Okay, let that leg down and switch. Hug the other knee in. One more breath. Okay, let that foot come down. Bend the other knee again. Actually, I'm going to lose the cushion or the pillow for just a second. Come into bridge. Arms down by your sides, palms flipped up. And on an in breath, we're going to lift the bottom off the ground, pushing the hips up in the direction of the sky or ceiling. So this might bring you to straight back. If you were to push up farther, you might even feel it as, a, as an arch. Go to where it feels right to you. Feel the belly tight and engaged. One more breath. Okay, set all that back down. Rock your knees a little side to side. Okay, knees back to center, flopping in if you want them to. Arms down by your sides, but we're going to lift up and move the arms as we lift with each breath, okay? Inhale, lift your bottom up, arms come up and back, big stretch. Exhale, back down. One more. Okay, same thing as before, a little tummy tightening, isolating just the abs as we breathe. So as we inhale, press the lower back towards the ground and that tips the pelvis up a little, forward a little bit. Exhale, relax. Again, inhale, pressing the lower back down. Exhale. Keep that going at the pace of your breath. Five more rounds of breath. Listen to your breath. relax when you're done with that one. Take both knees over to one side, flop them over, arms can come out wide, or the back arm can come up and rest on your ribs, whatever.
Again, feel where you have landed on the ground. One thigh is more up in the air, the other side, the thigh and the hip pressing down into the ground. Outside of one ankle, maybe the inside of the other ankle and foot. One more breath. And bring your knees back to center. Plant your feet in the ground. Use the strength of your legs and maybe your hands as a spatula to pick your bottom up and set it back down on the ground. And then we'll flop over to the other side with the knees. Nothing needs to be pressed into the floor. Nothing needs to be adjusted. unless it doesn't feel good. Pick your knees back up to center. Use your hands. Help pick your lower back up a little bit. Set it back down on the ground. Now we're going to get our cushions, cushion or cushions. Maybe one under your head if that feels good. And then the other one we're going to put, I'm going to put under my knees. This is where this comes in now. If you have a piece of laundry, hopefully clean, or a kitchen towel or whatever, prop the cushion under your knees. Notice where your feet land. Don't need to be flat-footed. Let your heels dig into the ground. And then last, take your little kitchen towel. Cover your eyes. You can even sort of use it to tuck in around your ears to really give you that inward, turning inward feeling. And now be here in this moment with all the things that there are to notice right now in this moment, we don't leave any room for the thoughts and stress of outside regular life to come in. Find your breath. Follow it into your body and out of your body. Feel where you have landed on the ground. Feel all the support underneath you and how it rises up to meet you and give you support. Whatever's beneath your head. Feel your shoulder blades pressing into what's underneath you. Feel how long and relaxed your back and spine are. Hips settled, settling, softening into what's underneath you. Legs heavy and squashing whatever's beneath them. Heels of your feet making little indents. Feel the softness of your body and allow it to be softer, melting. Imagine yourself as a bathtub full of water, full and heavy, but little by little allowing the water in you to drain out of the backside of you soaking into the earth beneath you. Every breath, more of you draining. The tension draining out of you. Feel the level of water 
in the bathtub of yourself, getting lower and lower. You can stay here in this resting pose as long as you want. Listen to music or simply listen to your own breath and stay here. Or if you're ready to come out of this, uncover your eyes, but close your eyes really tight because it's going to be bright once you remove that. Stretch your arms up above your head. Kick out what's beneath your legs. Let your legs be straight or bent. It doesn't matter. Do what feels good. Maybe rock a little bit. Now feel yourself here in this moment as a whole. Whatever pain you're in, whatever tension and stress you have, maybe you find yourself feeling a little bit better, a little less stressed, a little looser than you were before you started practicing. And as you feel yourself and take your whole body in, your physical self as well as your emotional self, your subtle body, our breath. Feel the strength that resides in you. It's easy to forget any time, but especially during this big crisis that we're all in. In this moment, feel your strength. And bring one hand to your heart, the other hand to your belly. And feel yourself breathe just a few more times before we go on about our day. Mahatma Gandhi said, strength does not come from a physical capacity. It comes from an indomitable will. Remember that. Feel your strength and your ability to get through the rest of this day and the next, whatever it brings. And bring your hands together at your heart. Press your thumbs into your breastbone. Remembering your heart is just right beneath your thumbs. The light that is in me honors and shines on the light that I feel through each of you and the world around us, all of us going through this together. I hope this practice benefited you as much as it did me. See you on the mat next time. Namaste.